All right, guys, so our courier just dropped off this nice large box to our front door. And it's actually a shipment from Canada Goose. So I was actually really surprised at how small the packaging is. But I guess if you buy a bird filled jacket, that it doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, what's really neat about this is that it comes in a nondescript box other than um, it's plain cardboard. It has my ship address on it. And it has this funky security tape that says this card has been sealed with pilfer proof tape. Um, so basically, it says if the seal's broken, check contents before acceptance which makes a lot of sense because Canada Goose jackets are high value items that are often counterfeited um, and a lot of fakes are being sold or real ones being resold for a hefty profit for thieves. Anyways, I've already cut the tape open, crack open the box and of course it comes in this ooh, super fancy magnetic lid box, feels like. Well, let's see, I'll dump this out. Here we're presented with this fairly well-made, smooth finish delivery box, presentation box. And what's really neat is that it actually has a magnetic closure. And I've never actually purchased a jacket from Canada Goose directly. I've always bought through their partner retailers. So that's kind of a neat little touch. But uh, here we are. What we have here is a Arctic Rigger coverall. Um, that's thermal experience index rated for five, which means it's good for minus 30 and below. And for those that are wondering why I would need something this extreme, well, if you go winter camping and hang out, you know, at a campground or a late freezing cold lake with wind chills down to minus 45, you actually do want to have one of these to keep you warm. It actually works out to be cheaper to buy something as extreme as this, as a one piece, for 1,050 Canadian than to buy something like a fashion parka, which is also very warm for say 1,600. And the bonus is that you get the snow pads attached to it, which are normally 695 if purchased separately. Now, inside here, we it looks like, well, we've got our tag here with the price on it, 1,050. And then we've also got this fancy envelope um, that is made from a very nice thick paper stock. And then it looks like we've got sort of the Canada Goose paperwork that's got my order number and contact information, essentially my invoice. And then inside, it looks like we've also got two copies of the warranty. And it's saying that it's built to the highest quality standards with a lifetime warranty against workmanship, right? Due to a manufacturing defect. So wear and tear isn't covered. Now, this particular jacket and the reason why I bought this, aside from the need for extreme cold weather protection, is the fact that Canada Goose, starting in 2023, will no longer be using any fur products in their, in their lineup. So here's another pleasant surprise when you buy directly from the manufacturer or perhaps even the Canada Goose retail store, if there's one in your city, is that you get the Canada Goose hanger, which I've never been given before when I bought my other jackets, and you also get this nifty, humongous storage bag, presumably for storage or transportation. It's just made of a lightweight fabric. It's pretty, it's strong, it's well made, but it's a lightweight fabric that's breathable, which I believe is necessary when storing any sort of bird stuffed jacket. So nice touch, no extra cost, whether you buy from a retailer or directly from the manufacturer. I prefer to buy from Goose directly, knowing you get this. All right, guys, so here we have the Arctic Rigger coverall, and I think it is the first and only review on YouTube of someone actually buying it and doing a video about it. So this is a size medium. It only comes in black. It is a 625 uh, fill duck down uh, coverall, so I'll call it a snowsuit, if you will. And it's actually originally designed by Canada Goose for Arctic Rig. I guess Arctic oil rig workers because they needed something that could handle the extreme weather in the Arctic North where they often drill for oil like places like Alaska and the Northwest Territories or even in Northern British Columbia and Northern Alberta in Canada. So Canada Goose rates this suit as a thermal experience index of five which means it's meant for minus 30 and colder temperatures which where I live can actually happen fairly often. Now most people have an issue with Canada Goose because they say, you know, it's now being worn more for fashion than it is function. But in this particular case, 
I spend a lot of time outside in the extreme cold. I've traveled to places like Nunavut, and I also do a lot of winter camping. I want to try ice fishing, and I just generally walk around in extremely cold weather for some bizarre reason. Now, on the Arctic rigor coverall, uh, we'll start talking about the different aspects of the suit. So let's start with the enormous hood on my head here. So it is extremely deep. If you look at the side profile, you can see that the hood extends out really far. I look like Kenny from South Park and the fur is obscuring my vision. So the purpose of why this hood is so big is because this type of suit is meant to go over a helmet, usually a safety helmet for oil rig workers. I can actually shrink the volume of the hood by pulling um, this nifty head volume strap so I can make the hood deeper, right, by loosening it. And then I can actually shrink the volume back by tightening that strap, which pulls the top of the hood back. Now within this fur ruff, which is also removable, by the way, it unzips so you can store it away if you don't want to have the fur, um, or you can zip it back on when you need it. But it's actually got a wire stiffener inside. So you can see, I can bend it to pretty much any shape that I need it to be, and it'll stay in that position so that it keeps your face nice and warm by blocking out that wind. Now, another thing with the hood is that it's really convenient. It's got these elasticized poles to shrink the volume on the side and I guess the top of the hood further so that you can tighten it around your helmet or your head. And it's got these giant release buttons um, on the pull cord. So they're easy to pull, easy to release uh, when you're wearing really big bulky uh, mittens or gloves. So there's one on each side to help sort of accommodate or customize the volumized fit of this humongous hood. Now, moving down, We've got this front zipper here. I believe it's called a four-way zipper because we have the top zipper right here that pulls up this really high collar, which by the way, isn't lined with any micro fleece, but it's still very comfortable. It's high to keep the warmth in and to prevent the wind from going down into the suit, making you cold. But going back to the zippers, we have this top zipper that zips up and down, right? Like it should. And then we've also got a bottom zipper of the suit right here to accommodate ventilation and for bio relief purposes. So if you need to get something in your pant pocket uh, or you need to go to the bathroom, you can unzip this lower zipper to gain that access. Now, what's interesting about this Arctic Rigger suit is that it actually does not employ a uh, storm flap over the zipper. The zipper itself is a heavy duty YKK zipper. So it's got these really large chunky nubs so it won't get caught on things easily. It's extremely durable, but the trade-off is that wind can actually penetrate the teeth of the zipper and then blow, cold air can blow into the suit. So if you're in howling winds, I would suspect that I would feel a little bit of wind coming in. Now that is partially mitigated by this inside storm flap, which exists on many jackets, uh, but it surprises me that for something this extreme, that there isn't some type of Velcro or button up zipper, or even a double zipper for that matter, on something like this. Now, I mentioned, I believe earlier that this is a size medium. I'm a five foot four individual. Uh, I'm not all that large, but I'm certainly not small. And it's a little bit on the bulky side. It's roomy. I'm normally a large in a Canada Goose fusion fit, so this is actually a medium because this is considered a classic loose fit and because it's a one piece snowsuit that naturally it just has more room inside. So I prefer the slightly looser fit because the intent of wearing an extreme weather suit like this is that you have to layer underneath. And when you start layering with merino wool layers on the inside or fleece, that things start to get thick and you want to have that bit of extra room so that you're still comfortable. Now on the inside of the jacket, there's no special lining. It's just your standard nylon lining. I wish that it had some type of micro fleece on the inside to give it a bit more warmth, a bit more windproofing, but it's, you know, it's no big deal, I guess, for what I need it for. Um, on the front of the suit, right, you have two pockets. They don't have any zippers, velcros, or buttons to keep them secure at the tummy or waist level, if you will. They are fleece lined. Um, and I suspect the reason why they didn't put any fasteners here is that if you're, again, an Arctic oil rig worker that you want to have unhindered access into your pockets for whatever reason. Now, you also have two additional pockets on your thighs, which are in fact secured with Velcro flaps that they're quite deep. My hands are not that small and they actually can fit my hands and then some. Lots of space in there. Um, and then lastly, on the inside of the suit, there is again another pocket no zipper or button um, that you can say drop like your keys or your cell phone in there uh, to keep it close to your chest to keep the warmth. 
but what's really interesting is that for a suit again this substantial there's actually only five pockets and i really wish that canada goose would include another inside zipper pocket maybe on the right side or even a couple of zipper pockets on the chest like some of the other canada goose jackets now on the back side of the suit um, we have this elasticized waist and so that brings in sort of the bulkiness of the suit um, so instead of having like a standard parka that goes straight down um, and a separate pair of pants that of course it's joined so they have that elasticized waist to shrink things down to make it less frumpy looking um, now uh, looking I guess at the side of the pants so like the front we have two zippers one at the top and one at the bottom so the top one naturally unzips so that I can get access to pockets here so I'm wearing shorts because it's not that cold out and I can reach in or I could just unzip it to ventilate. Again, there's no outside storm flap, only an inside sort of wind flap there. Now, zip that back up. Now on the bottom of the leg, we also have this zipper that goes up. And of course, this allows you to gain access to easily put on your boots, like the ones that I'm wearing right here. And then beneath that, we have a Velcro sort of snow gaiter um, that just sort of ties together to keep the snow out from riding up into the pants. Now, an interesting thing on this Arctic Rigger coverall is that it's got this bottom elasticized band that's sewn right into the edge of the hem of the pants. And this is supposed to go underneath the boot like this. Um, it's a stirrup, I should say. And the whole purpose of that is to keep the uh, uh, pant hem down on your legs so that it doesn't ride up, so to speak, on your boots. Now, I see a couple of problems with this, is that number one, if you're stepping on dirty bathroom floors or dirty ground, that this elasticized band is gonna get all gross and dirty. Secondly, because it's just an elasticized band, that with the rugged terrain that this might be worn in, that it would eventually chew through this fairly delicate fabric and then eventually tear and then just look ratty. I think a better design would have been to either eliminate this altogether or create something that is replaceable that can either be locked in place or hooked into place um, as a replaceable piece that won't look all ratty if it tears off of the bottom of your pant. Now coming in and taking a closer look at the sleeves, we have this sort of rib elasticized um, uh, thick fabric cuff. It fits nicely around my wrist. There's no sort of velcro strapping of any sort uh, to tighten it. if. I want to make it smaller but it does fit my wrist perfectly it does have a lot of stretch in it so you can stretch over your wrist watches if you're wearing one and the best part is because it fits closely that you can wear a gauntlet style mitten or glove and it would go over that sleeve to provide you that additional cold protection the outside fabric is fairly uh, heavy grade um, but it's not so heavy that the suit feels bulky i really like the suit a lot i like the fact that it uses a fur rough that's a bit of a controversial topic, but let's just say that fur insulates well. The fit obviously is a little bit long on the length because I'm not very tall, but the sleeves for a size medium on someone like myself fit perfectly. Individuals that are about six foot tall will actually fit this uh, pair of coveralls fairly well as sort of shown on the Canada Goose website. But I have read some anecdotal reviews that anyone that's taller than about six or six one will find that the length of the pants and the sleeves a bit too short. So this is not to say that the Arctic Rigger coverall is perfect. There are quite a few improvements that I would like to see made to this suit. Um, given that the price premium that is being charged. Number one is this gigantic Canada Goose Arctic program patch. It's huge and I feel like a walking billboard, especially on black, and then you have this bright blue, red, and white logo. They should either eliminate it or they should minimize it, put it on the shoulder like all their other jackets. They don't need to make it so prominent, especially for something as utilitarian as this suit. The other thing is I would like to see more pockets. As I mentioned earlier, there's only five pockets on the suit and really there should probably be six or seven. Most of them on the inside with maybe a couple additions on the chest with zippers so I could put a gigantic iPhone Pro Max into it and not worry about it falling out. Um, other things would be to have an outside storm flap, preferably a button style one because I hate Velcro. 
um, and that provides that additional wind protection. Maybe even add a double zipper because if this tears in the extreme cold and this pops apart, you're pretty much dead in the water because there's no ways for you to close this jacket back up. They really should have thought about that and add a dual zipper or a dual storm flap at the very minimum. Now, the other thing too is uh, I mentioned the leg uh, stirrup, right? Or the, the hem stirrup. They really should just get rid of that or create a way to improve it so that if it breaks or if it rips, um, that you have a means to replace it or a way to clean them because you can't wash these suits. They're dry clean only. So that's another disadvantage of the Canada Goose um, product is that they all have to be dry clean. Um, the other thing too is that uh, this is not any fancy Gore-Tex fabric. Um, this is not waterproof, right? It is meant for extreme cold, which often means it's cold and dry and snowy. Uh, not necessarily to be used in rainy climates. And that applies for all the Canada Goose parkas. They're not meant for West Coast weather or places that have extreme amounts of water in the snow. That's just, that's the wrong type of jacket to be wearing. Um, the other thing too uh, that I noticed on this Arctic Rigger suit is that <coughs> on the back here, under the hood, right where the shoulders are, so <coughs> between the shoulder blades, on some of my other goose jackets, there is a nylon sort of uh, strap that you can use to pick up the garment and hang on a wall without fear of uh, damaging the jacket. Well, for something this big and relatively heavy compared to say a normal bomber style jacket, that there's no strap on the back. Um, I really wish that they did that because that would be handy for something this big. So the final two things that I change about the Arctic rear coverall is that despite how warm this suit is and how comfortable it is that it still surprises me that they didn't add any provisions for venting in the armpit area because you can vent the bottom you can vent the front but you can't necessarily open up a small crack in your armpits to sort of air that out um, and the other thing is that unlike some of my other goose jackets what happens if say i'm in a really cold place and then I step indoors to use the bathroom or to buy a beverage or to grab tools, whatever it might be, that it's super hot inside, I might have to spend 10 minutes inside and then say I have to take off the jacket this way. Well, or the upper portion of the suit. Well, it, right now there's no provisions to sort of hold it up and so therefore the hood would end up dragging on the ground. And my other goose jackets actually have a set of suspenders that are attached on the inside so that when I do go indoors and I don't want to carry the jacket in my arm, which you can't do for something like this, that it would be nice to be able to wear this and have the top part hanging off of my shoulders so it's not, well, dragging on the ground. So that's something that I think Canada Goose really missed out on this jacket and I think that they could have made a substantial improvement on. So uh, hopefully future iterations of this coat uh, will resolve that problem. But in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, these are things that aren't necessarily deal breakers uh, for something like this. I really like the suit. I think that it offers a lot of great value. If you think about it, for 1050 Canadian, you're getting a thermal experience index of five coat and pant together. Whereas if you were to buy, say, a parka that was the equivalent cold rating, like a Westmount, for example, you're paying $1,500 Canadian for a jacket from the same color with a very similar cut that's three quarters length, so down past my knees, two pockets on the chest, I think, and two pockets on the side. I think it advertises as 10 pockets, so it's got more, but it's $1,500, and I still don't have pants, which are an additional 700 and for my particular use case where I do go in the wild and I'm out in the bush or I'm out camping or whatever it might be, that I want something that's gonna keep me warm and comfortable and be extremely well made. So I think that this is tremendous value. It's only gone up about $250 over the course of the last five to six years, which means that I think the value still exists in something like this, whereas something like the Parkas, uh, Westbound Parka, even the Chateau Parka, that used to be like $800 to $1,000, is now fifteen to $1,600 for something like that in 2022. I hope you guys found this review really useful and informative. If you like it, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and stay tuned for future videos of me using the suit and watching it in action. Thanks for watching.